All right, guys, thank you for joining us for tonight's uh, podcast of Titans Ever On. Joined again by my brothers. We're going to jump into the, the recap of the game that we all got to witness a couple of nights ago and then look ahead to the, uh, the divisional matchup with the Texans. So first things first, um, did anybody slightly wet themselves when Derrick Henry <laughs> stiff arms Josh Norman? Or was that just me? Yeah. I think Josh Norman did. <laughs> I think he did too, yeah. Yeah, that, so, that is true. So we we were just to kind of just to kind of give you a. I, I know everybody had probably similar experience with that, but we were watching it. The whole family was upstairs in our in our bonus room watching it, and my wife was on a couch where she couldn't really see the TV, and she wasn't really paying attention. She was on her computer, and when he stiff armed him, and, you know the play is like a not. It was like kind of a nothing play. Like it didn't yeah. really really didn't really do. It was it a penalty, yet. wasn't it? There were yeah, flags there was on a, both teams. There was a hold. Yeah. It literally is a play that does not exist. Like, it does not count in any way. Yeah. But when he did it, I mean, I, I, I yelled. Like, like this loud, ha, ah! sort of like yell. <laughs> My oldest son, Aiden, jumps up off the couch. I mean, we just all lost our minds because I had never seen a football player literally just take another player and throw him away. Just like, not just stiff arm you, but like just launch yeah. And the way Norman sort of twil- tis- twilted his, twisted his body to the side and kind of went, you know, <laughs> yeah, airborne parallel to the to the field. It was it was great. So experiences okay. with that. Here's Thanks. here's the question. Here's the question. Yeah. Um, which play is greater, Christian Leitner, David <laughs> David Tyree, or the Derrick Henry stiff arm? Christian Leitner. <laughs> <laughs> it's no. I mean, Tyree helped win the Super Bowl. You know, Leitner won national the, championship. Yeah, or was yeah, that on the way on the way to a national yeah. championship? And um, and Henry got you know a penalty. You know, or he he didn't get a penalty, but uh, the play was canceled because of penalties. Um, but still, I think it's that I think just shows how great it was that it's even in the conversation. <laughs> even in the conversation, yeah, yeah. So it it is in the conversation. Only this conversation, but interestingly right. enough, it no, it's amazing. not just this conversation. It's like the play that everybody is talking about in that game. Like, like I said, it's a play that didn't even count. And everyone, every like NFL fan, that's the play that everybody's talking about. Like, it doesn't matter that the Titans completely whoop the Bills. Like, that's yeah, the play people that's want the to talk about. But man, that he has so many. I mean, with so many of those he had the Earl Thomas you know last year where he turned him around and you know basically used him as like a blocker for 10 yards he had the you know the Jacksonville run where he you know stiff armed three different people stiff armed three people and ran at 100 yards or 99 yards or whatever so yeah I mean this one wasn't even as good as those plays in terms of the result but man it was yeah he just he just does some plays that just Jump out, we, jump out at you. We joked around, the, the boys and I joked around that the only way he's going to top that sort of a stiff arm where he launched Josh Norman into orbit was if he literally runs up to a, a smaller cornerback and takes him by the front of his jersey and picks him up and literally uses him like as a shield to like knock other people off. And the thing is, though, after seeing him throw Josh Norman, I'm not – I'm not convinced that he couldn't do that at least for a few yards. Yeah. Like, I think he could actually take somebody and use them. I mean, he kind of used Earl Thomas as a blocker. The way yeah, he turned he did. Him around and kind of pushed him ahead of him. Um, but actually get somebody off the ground and use them just to kind of th- or throw them into somebody else sort of thing. And how the refs would even like officiate that. Like you picked up another player and threw them into other players is that legal? Like, is that something that people are allowed to do? But yeah, it was, it was awesome. I yelled, the kids laughed and yelled, and then they showed the replays, and yeah, we got to watch it. And I've probably watched a hundred different memes of it that people have right, yeah. So it's fantastic. So outside of the Derrick Henry run, um, which amounted to nothing, um, other than just you know a, a million replays, what were some of the biggest takeaways from that game for you guys? Positives and negatives. We don't have to yeah. limit the one and then the other. Just kind of give me your your impression of the game. I'll do a couple things. I won't 
I won't try to say everything just so, you know, we, we can all talk about stuff, but uh, just the, how crisp they were after being off that long, not being able to practice, missing a bunch of guys. I, I, I did not, I did not necessarily think we were going to lose going in. I thought it was going to be tough to beat a really good team uh, in Buffalo, but you know, I thought if we did win, it would be kind of one of those, was it, the, was it last year or two years ago when, I guess it was two years ago when, when Mariota went out and um, they were playing Houston. He got hurt, he got hurt the game before and they're like, their offense is really gimmicky that game. They yeah. won it. Do you remember what I'm talking about? They won the game. Yeah. It was two but years. But it was like, yeah. they just ran it like crazy. They did a yeah, fake punt. Yeah. I mean, all kinds yeah. of stuff. I mean, it was just a lot of gimmicks, a lot of weird stuff you know they did a wildcat a lot i mean it was just yeah. like we're, we're really limited um and so we don't have the, as much talent we're just going to do some things um to make the game you know just bring more variables into it make it more unpredictable and then maybe you know you can get a win and they did and obviously this game it was a little different because they didn't have the practice time to throw in a bunch of crazy stuff but i, I thought you know they're, they're going to run henry like 50 times and you know, not really 50, but you know what I mean? And just, just, you know, kind of don't let their offense on the field as much try to, you know, and, but they were crisp and they, they passed. I mean, the running was not, well, won the game. I mean, they, they didn't, they weren't awful running the ball, but they moved the ball passing super efficient, you know, completing everything. So yeah, I was, and then the defense was not out of position, um, which I thought they kind of probably would be just because not having, being able to work on their schemes. So very impressed with all that. Yeah. The defense was not fantastic. Um, I mean, I think the final score looks and the stat line of having the interception, I think that looks better than it actually was, you know, the, the but no big plays. Y- yeah. That, that, no, that, that is true. They didn't give up big plays. They, they gave up tons of first downs, um, yeah. especially on third down. It was like, um, they couldn't, or like, you know, there's that one time where Buffalo had like a first and or second and 25 and they were still able to convert. And you're like, how do you, anyway. Um, but cause they gave up lots of like 15, 10 yard blades um, rather than like 30, 40 yard blades. Um, but you know, like those interceptions, the first one was, you know, not necessarily a great defensive play, just a, um, and the other one was a really bad pass, but I mean, same time we were there and uh, it was, you know, we, they did the job well enough and yeah, the, I mean, the offense I think was playing well enough to win that game, even if Buffalo would have scored on those kinds of drives. Um, we were just, they didn't really stop us. Um, and Ryan Tannehill is, I was looking at the, uh, what is it? The quarterback rating, uh, the the QBR. What does that stand for? Is, I don't. I, I think it's is it quarterback rating as opposed to passer rating. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's what it is. I think it's yeah, quarterback yeah. rating. It's a. I mean, it's a more recent stat that ESPN developed. Yeah. In the last decade or so, but it it's supposed to factor in running and some other things that passer rating doesn't. Okay. That's and kind it's of. Out the, of a, it's out of a hundred, so it does make a little right. more sense. It's not yeah. like a perfect rating is like, you know, 144.3. One, yeah, 158.3, I think is it. 158.3, yeah. okay. Um, so is anyway, the passer rating? I mean, current, currently we have Rodgers, Mahomes, Allen, and Tannehill. Tannehill's number four. And I'd take, especially after that last game, i take Tannehill over Allen for sure. Um, and it looks like, I mean, R- Russell Wilson's high up there, but at this point – I mean, especially Prescott's out. I mean, I think I'd take Tannehill over anybody but Mahomes, Rodgers, and and Wilson. Um, I guess, I don't know. You want to add some names to that list that you would take, ten, you know, you would take above Tannehill? I don't know. I mean, those are kind of the big three. Um, yeah. Beyond that, I don't know that there's anyone that's – oh, yeah, definitely. Phil, can you think of anybody? I mean, Lamar Jackson would be – Totally different, yeah. I mean – It's different, but, I mean, he's, he's – just a wild card because it's hard. I mean, yeah, he's very effective. I mean, nothing against yeah. but it's a he's, different – He's uh, perfect for the offense that they run. And right. 
he has shown that he can be a, a good enough passer most yeah. of the time to, to, to not just be one dimensional. I mean, he can throw the ball. He can. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I, I would say, I would say Tannehill is playing since he took over a starter. I would say he's, he's probably in the conversation as a top five quarterback. I think most people would probably that pay any attention to football would probably put him in the top 10. Um, they may not bump him all the way up to the top, the top five, but I think statistically it'd be hard to argue that he doesn't belong in that category, but yeah, I think Tannehill plays. Yeah. I think he's playing with just, I think he's just playing with a ton of confidence and he, it's almost like he, he looked, he looked at what the offense was under Mariota and saw where Mariota was struggling which was making those just decisive throws in, in tight windows and, and basically convinced himself, told himself, you, you, you just can't do that. You just have to throw the ball with confidence and you just have to put it in there and, and let your receivers make plays. And that's what he's done. And the whole offense is just, is just clicking. I mean, it's, it's fun to watch. And a lot of times though, like in this game, I mean, he had people open. Like it wasn't like every throw he was making was just highly contested. He's got no, guys all over not the this field game. that are open. But there are times he's he, – he, like we've said before, he has those maybe three or four throws a game that Mariota would, not, would never have made. He was just not making that throw, at least not the right. last couple of seasons. His he would not attempt seasons, it. His first two seasons, he would have attempted them. But then yeah. after that, he just won't – he wouldn't attempt those throws. And Tannehill, he's, he's attempting them, and he completes them most of the time. And those are big plays for that offense because they mean the drive ex- it extends or it's a big play where they either score or get down the field. So, yeah, offensively, they, they looked incredibly crisp, which I was, I was not expecting either. I thought they would be a little, a little sloppy. I thought it would be kind of one of those, you know, I wouldn't say ugly, but I thought it would be like you'd have some, you know, false starts and some, just guys that seemed kind of out of position or they ran the wrong route or just stuff like that. And I hoped that it wouldn't result in, in negative plays or turnovers. So yeah, it, that's a great coaching job to get those guys ready to go. Yeah. The kind of the kind of two weeks they had had. So you guys mentioned defensively uh, some of the, some of the downside to the, to what the defense did. Um, but I would say this, they, they've been really opportunistic this year. I mean, they're getting turnovers. Um, so even when they're not, even when they're not stopping people and they've got to clean that up, they got to stop people on third down. Like you can't continue having that kind of stat and being one of the yeah. worst third down defense in the league and continue to win, a, you know, consistently at some point that's going to come back and bite them. Cause turnovers are random. I mean, they turnovers don't. Turnovers are random and they'll equalize somewhat. Yeah, and, so, and may, some years are just your year, you know, and you just get them all year and it seems, yeah. you know, it doesn't happen year after year, though. But, you know, maybe this will just be the Titans' year. But yeah, you could have just been the Titans' first quarter of the year and then the next eight right. games we don't get any. So, yeah, they've got to they've got to get the, the rest of the defense fixed. But I was happy to see they didn't give up. They weren't getting gouged in the running game like the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, so they, they were better on defense. Uh, yeah. Even if you take out the turnovers, they were better. Um, I agree. They're still struggling uh, on third down, but they definitely, yeah. they definitely looked better than, than they have. And it's, I, I, I feel like you're, we're close, and it may happen in Houston. I think we're close to having one of those Jadavian Clowney games where he just blows up. Because yeah, he hope, was getting pressure so. all night, and he just wasn't – quite getting to Allen, but he was getting close. And um, I feel like maybe going back to Houston, that could be his opportunity to really like just, just have one of those really big monster games where he forces a couple, gets a couple sacks, maybe forces a, a fumble, yeah. that kind of stuff. So. Is um, speaking of next week, um, what a, what players might be able to come back? Like, are we going to have Simmons? Are we going to have Simmons has um, been da- Davis? Okay. Simmons and Humphreys were both cleared today. Um, Davis is still not cleared, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I hope they get him back. 
Um, he was one of the really, later ones to go on, though, he right? He was one of the later ones, though. Not just for the offense, but I just – I'm really wanting him to have a good – a big season this year. And he's he was playing really well. He was. And has having a really good season, and then he, you know, gets stuck on the COVID list. So, he's already missed one game. I don't want him to miss multiple games because of this. But, yeah, Simmons and Humphreys are both back. So, that's – that in and of itself is already a really big deal. Our talent at receiver is is really good. I mean, like, it's – I think for years we've kind of been – because we haven't had a strong passing game and it's been mainly running, you know, it's like, we, oh, we invest in these receivers and then, like, oh, it doesn't really – you know, Davis was never a great first-round kind of player. But it seems like now with Brown and Davis the, the, when he was in and Humphreys, you know, like, that was a good free agent pickup. And like all oh, those guys are just, and then Raymond had a great game. Oh, this is the dog here. Yeah. <laughs> is your dog? My dog um, just came visiting me as well. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's just like those guys, now that we are more of a passing team, um, we look like a team with elite receivers, you know? Like now that the offense looks like, oh, this is, you know. Um, and John U. Smith, man. Yeah. He's monster season. He's a monster. I mean, he's, he's putting up. He's putting up incredible numbers this year. I mean, I, I, I got into a, a Facebook argument today on the Titans Ever On Facebook page. So it wasn't about politics? It wasn't about <laughs> politics, but I got into an argument about our receiving core compared to Kansas City's uh, receiving core. Um, and the person I was arguing with said that they ha- we have uh, far lesser talent than Kansas City. Um, and said that nobody on our team is better than Hill, Kelsey, or Watkins. Um, and I said, I could give you Hill and Kelsey because they're both elite. I mean, right. um, Watkins is nothing. I mean, Watkins, right. is not, but he's not a bad receiver, but he's not better than Brown or Davis. Um, statistically, he's just not. He's not put up. He's had a couple of seasons where he had over 60 receptions. Most of his other seasons are in the 30s and 20s. Like, he's just not the guy. Um, yeah. And then you add in Humphreys, who was on pace for, you know, 70 receptions this year. Um, Brown, what we saw from his rookie season, and I think he, I mean, when he's healthy, you saw him Tuesday night. I mean, he's a he's a legit yeah. one, one A or one B receiver out there making catches. And, and then you throw in Smith, who no, he's not Kelsey, but he's on pace for close to 80 receptions and – 800, like 800 yards 20 touchdowns. and 20 touchdowns, which I know he, he's not going to get 20 touchdowns, but he has five touchdowns in four games. And that's a, yeah. and that's not fluky. And I was, I was, I was telling somebody else today, I said that he's such a, he's such a, a matchup problem in the red zone and the goal line, because if you put a quarterback on him, he just can use his size on him. If you put a linebacker on him, he's faster than linebackers. So it's like, how do you defend the guy? with that type of ability, which is what you want from your speedy athletic tight ends. And, and they clearly have identified him as a, as a target when they get to the red zone. I mean, you're, you're probably either scoring with running the ball with Derrick Henry or you're throwing the ball to Janu. It's yeah. what it looks like their offense really likes to do when you get, when you get down there. So. And he is scary, uh, you know, on a screen pass. Yes. I mean, that. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah, their talent level, Dave, like you said, I, I think – I think it kind of all works hand in hand. The offensive scheme clearly works well, and Arthur Smith has done a really great job. Tannehill is playing fantastic. You have a really good running game, and you can play off of that with the play action. But they actually have weapons. They have guys who yeah. can actually – they can do stuff with the ball in their hands, and they create separation, and they're getting open, and they're making catches, and it's fun. I mean, the Titans haven't had a great offense in a, in a while, so – I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do if they can stay healthy the whole season, what kind of numbers they can put up as an offense. So we seem to get uh, Simmons back and hopefully a Dory comes back healthy pretty soon. Cause I think that would help a lot of things with the secondary. Yeah. It's having your best corner back there and, or at least one of your top two corners. Um, I don't think anybody else, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else on the COVID list that they would really, really need to get back. I think Cam Batson, I think he's come off the list <laughs> and he's oh what's hey, up buddy <laughs> joining us for the for the podcast um 
so yeah, so let's look ahead to, uh, we have about, about 10 minutes left, uh, give or take. Let's look ahead to Texas, the Texans, and that matchup. Do we think they're dangerous because they've fired, fired Bob and uh, yeah. turned it over to, it's Romeo Cornell, right? He's, he's the interim. Right. Uh, oh. I know oh, they won their first game with Cornell. Was, was he the D coordinator? Yeah, I think so. Right now, now he's yeah. Um, yeah, I just don't know how how bad the Texans are. Like, I mean, I think the uh, I mean, record wise and all the rest, they they appear to be a bad team coming into the season. I thought I thought it was going to be a fight between us and the Texans for the division, um, just because I I've always kind of been afraid of. Um, you know Watson and like that their, their scheme and and they have good receivers and um, they've had a pretty good defense. Um, anyway, so like, have you guys seen them play? I haven't. I haven't. I think I've seen one game of theirs, but I haven't seen them enough to 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 know like, are they are they as bad as their record shows? I don't think they are. Um, I've seen some of two or three games. I think. Um, yeah, I don't think they're as bad as their record. They uh, they had some tough, you know, tough schedule so far, uh, and they've they have looked. I'm trying to. They, I know they got beat by the Chiefs. Do they do they play Seattle? It seems like it was another yeah, good I team look, that they I lost. I look up their schedule. I don't. I don't know who they played. Did they play? It seems like the first couple weeks they played pretty tough teams. Did they yeah, they got. Vikings? The Chiefs, yeah. the Steelers, and the Ravens, they played the first three weeks. Maybe I'm thinking so that the Ravens. Is a, that is a tough yeah, lineup. I'll see it. Yeah. And then they got beat by the Vikings, which was, I think, a beatable team if you're going to be a good – you know. And then they beat the, uh, they beat the, Jags. the Jags. Yeah, I think they're a little better than what their record may show, but I don't – I mean, the Titans should beat them. I, I don't have any doubt about that. I do wonder, though – are we? Is this the first time there's been, because of a Tuesday night game, we're playing on short rest? I know a lot of teams play short rest because they play Thursday, but they're they're playing another team that's also on short rest. Is this the first time we've had a team playing on two days less rest than the team they're, than their opponent? Does that make sense? What I'm asking? Yeah, no, it makes sense. I, you know, I don't know um, because usually, you know, two teams play Sunday, then they play Thursday, so they're both. Yeah, you know they're both having to deal with the short rest. It's not usually where one team played it on Tuesday and then, and even Buffalo is getting till Monday to play. You know they don't have to play again until Monday, so they're getting almost a full week. Whereas the Titans are playing, you know, the normal yeah. s- Sunday kickoff. So I mean, um, yeah, I mean whatever. It's it, it this year's crazy, is. so it's, it's just is what it is. Is what it is, uh, and that's they just have to deal with it. But um, could be interesting. Yeah, it's a it's a divisional game, which always to me you kind of I, I I know it's cliche, but I think you, you throw out the record books. You throw out the record books. Um, Watson has historically really done some damage on the Titans. Um, they have a hard time dealing with him now. He doesn't have the best receiver that he's had every other yeah. time he's played them, who has also been a complete nightmare for the Titans. Yeah. Um, so that's that clearly is one of the things that's affected their offense. But yeah, uh, still Watson is still dangerous, and I I don't look forward to our defense ever playing against him. Um, so that's why I'm hoping that Clowney will have a big game, and I'm hoping that with Simmons back, their interior offensive line's bad. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, Simmons can have just a monster game as well. Uh, because you want to contain Watson and keep him from scrambling around and making plays. And, but yeah, I, I don't think they're as bad as their record, but I do think they're very flawed as a team. And I think that they're definitely beatable because I think the Titans top to bottom are a, a much better team. I think they're more talented. I think they're better coached. So, and it's at home. I know it is on a couple days less rest and they've got some injuries and then all the COVID stuff, but I don't, I don't really get concerned about the Titans not being prepared uh, under Vrabel. Right. 
they he he typically seems to have the team ready to go, um, especially when he seems to thrive when things are unpredictable and when things are not kind of optimal. Uh, he kind of seems to come up with his his best sort of coaching in those situations. So I'm hoping this is another of those times where he he does that. Um, and they I, played I one fewer game. You say they played one fewer game than the Texans this year. So even though they're coming off a short rest, their bodies have not had the right the same you know the same. And they've only played because they've only one, only played one game in the last three. You know it'll be like three. Right. Games. So yeah, I think that's. Uh, I don't. I don't think that'll be too much of a factor. All right. So we all pretty much in agreement that we think the Titans should take care of business against the Texans. Um, put them to to five and zero for the season. Um, would that be? Is that two and zero in the division? Would be. It'd be two and zero in the division. Um, nice. I don't know the Colts. Yeah, this can we talk the about the Colts for a second? It might be their biggest threat, but it's also – I just – I don't trust Phillip Rivers anymore. Um, if that team is not a, ahead and they can't run the ball, he he just makes some really bad decisions with the ball. And his arms is not what his it arm is just, used yeah, to be. Not what it used to be. And he, he thinks he can still make these throws, and he just can't. Um, defensively, if they're healthy, the Colts are really good. So, I think that's the other – I, I, and I think Jacksonville is starting to realize that they're not a good team. Um, as I said, I think after the first couple of weeks, that's like they don't realize yet that they're a bad team. I think yeah. they're starting to sink in, and you'll start to see them kind of continue to tell off and just end as one of the worst yeah, teams I think in the, the league. The Colts are limited, in my opinion. Dave, you said you want to talk, but their defense is, does seem to be pretty solid. Um, so that's one thing they have going for them. But I, I do think they're limited limited in what they can do on offense. And it's the Titans division this year for the taking. Yeah. They've got to win it this year. I mean, this, we said at the beginning of the year they need to win it. Yeah. it's And it's it's more, it's even more clear now that they have no yeah. business uh, not winning this division by, you know, I don't know, three games probably. Yeah, especially with a start. I mean – yeah, it seems like if offensively, there's no – I mean, unless something happens, like we are – we can we can do it. It's just uh, – hopefully we can shore up some things on defense. And, and yeah, we we could be a just a dominant t- team, especially dominate this division. That'll be nice. All right. So, we'll wrap it up there. This will be a slightly shorter episode than what we've done. Uh, next week, we're going to try to – throw in a couple of new things to the podcast. Um, we haven't decided what those new things are, but we are <laughs> going to try to come up with some other stuff. Maybe the dog. To maybe make this a little bit more interesting for you guys. Um, feel free to hey, dude. Like the videos on YouTube, share them on Facebook and Twitter, and also subscribe to our channel. Um, if you also follow, it's the Rambling Never On YouTube channel. Um, the Titans ever on is under it's kind of part of that whole family um, you could also check out the couple of rambling ever on pad- podcast that we've done if you want to do that but feel free to subscribe that would be really cool um, we have added a few the last couple of weeks so all right guys you guys have a good night Jude's good to see you buddy Jude's got something to say Jude can... no. oh nothing to say okay. you can sign off all right. You guys have a good night. I know. What's up, Elliot? And we'll see you guys. We'll see you guys next week.